Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. Welcome to another video. Like the title says, this one is of course on my top 10 summer niche fragrances for 2020. And if it's your first time on this channel, just know that I kind of live for niche fragrances, especially summer ones. High-end uplifting stuff I just kind of have a weakness for and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I know that some people might have apprehensions with spending a lot of money on fragrances that might not last so long. But if that fleeting journey put that much of a smile on your face and that sheer emotion, supersedes the lack of longevity, then I don't think that's a bad thing to spend money on. But with all that being said, that's not just what I have on this list. I have stuff that is fleeting and I have stuff that is kind of beast mode. So I got a little bit of everything here for everyone, I hope. And without further ado, let's not waste any more time. So we're gonna count down from number 10 to number one. And at number 10 so far, here we go. It's Millicium Imperial by Creed. Now, Millicium Imperial is a mainstay on a lot of people's lists and for good reason. I just think it has a super unique DNA for its time and still despite a lot of alternatives out there for it. If you don't know this DNA, it has a fruity, citrusy opening characterized by a musky, sea salty dry down and I just think it's awesome. Like the imitation ambergris here with what I think is Kalone, I think it just smells awesome. So when you mix that with the citrus here, the citrus doesn't really lean citrusy and or sharp. Every Everything just kind of leans watery like watermelon believe it or not which I just think smells so regal here with a little bit of that salt too so who doesn't love salted watermelon I just think it's perfect for the summer and somehow it doesn't feel too casual as well like you can definitely dress the scent up so yeah just really versatile stuff here that I'll use for nearly any occasion when I just can't think of what else to wear but the thing is I've just reached for this scent a lot throughout the years this is actually my second bottle personally so you can tell that I really love this stuff but again just not not as excited to reach for it just because I've reached for it so much. That and I'm trying to limit my usage for this stuff because it is definitely not cheap. But nonetheless, it's definitely worth checking out if you've yet to. So please do so already. Again, it's my number 10. It's Millicent Imperial by Creed. Moving on to my number nine scent, and believe it or not, this is my night out compliment heavy scent. It's called First Sight by The Gate. And here's where we have a massive increase in performance despite what looks like fleeting notes just on paper. So citrus cocktail notes, a little bit of lemonade, feels kind of fizzy off of my skin at first, but what's most vibrant in the opening, believe it or not, is mint, which is seldom the case. Sometimes it just leans too toothpastey, and that might be a bummer for some people, including me, to be honest. But if you pair it with other stuff and don't make it just mint reliant, I feel like the mint can definitely shine in a different way, which is what I'm getting here. You also have this pear sorbet note, which leans creamy, whatever it is. So it's really fresh in a minty way, sharp in a citrusy way, yet sweet and fizzy and again, sweet in a creamy way. But altogether, the accord I get from the mid towards the dry down actually feels a little bit bubblegummy. And I'm not saying that to kind of denigrate it to make it sound cheap or whatnot. As a matter of fact, with that kind of vibe, it does something that all these other scents don't do. Like once the clubs start to open up again, this is definitely one of those night out scents that I'm wearing. And anyone I've had smell this off my skin kind of lamented that it doesn't smell too expensive per se, but they did really, really like the scent. And if you don't mind that kind of feedback, which I'm sure you wouldn't, I definitely think that it's worth checking out for you too. So it doesn't really have the most premium of a blend if you ask me, at least that's just not how it comes off of my skin, but you are getting a premium compliment factor for the premium price point and that I cannot hate. And that's why it's on this list. And again, I have a use for it for that compliment factor at night. So for some people, it really is love at first sight. For me, it is my number nine summer fragrance against first sight by The Gate. All right, moving on to my number eight summer fragrance this year, it's by Centauri Perfumes. This one is called Proxima. Now, if you've yet to hear of Centauri Perfumes, of course, this is the love child of Peter Carter, AKA my good friend Fragrance View on this YouTube platform. Really over the moon for him actually making this brand. I think everything looks awesome and I really like what I smelled so far, especially this in Proxima. I myself am a fan of berries and I wish berry was a little bit more prominent when it came to even designer perfumes perfumery as well as niche perfumery. And again, it's just berries galore here, berries and black currant. And off my, again, acidic skin type, like sweeter stuff like this just tends to go off of my skin. That being said, from what I know of people who also have this scent, it's really beast mode for them too, at least as far as the opening sake. And the longevity is quite good, despite for me, 
getting mainly what most people would think on paper to be is fruity fleeting notes. But again, it's just a really happy scent for me that just makes me think of halcyonic thoughts. So albeit if the base was a little bit more compelling than maybe a standard white musk and the opening wasn't too crazy with the berry, I'd probably like this a little bit more, but I still definitely love it anyway. That's why it's as high as number eight on the summer niche list. So again, if you've yet to check it out, please definitely do so. It is Proxima by Centauri Perfumes. All right, moving on, we have my number seven in summer fragrances here. This one is Splendiris by Poffins Ducida. Now I'm a big fan of this scent mainly because you get something here that's kind of different from everything else here. And this is like my quote unquote more like grim slash bad weather scent. I guess you can call it my rainy day fragrance for the summer just because for me in Southern Ontario, Canada with the Great Lakes around, the weather kind of gets volatile as in it's not dangerous per se, but sometimes it just can't make up its mind. Between beautiful sunlight where you can find yourself just chilling outside in the mid 80s to low 90s, you still have super heavy torrential downpours here and there, believe it or not. And with that being said, and some overcast weather as well, that's why I still have this for the summer. Admittedly, it leans spring-ish with its violet. Violet's a very green slash grassy, almost floral kind of note, but doesn't lean stuffy in my personal opinion. For me, it's kind of like walking through a field of grass, throwing some iris in there, which is the namesake of the scent. And I don't think you should be apprehensive of that too. I just think it feels really pretty. It's also more of an orange as well, like the orris butter from the orris root of an iris plant. It's like an earthy kind of stuffy, but one that doesn't come off as too perfumey with how it's subdued by some of that opening in mid greenness. Like the way I like to envision the scent is that it just rained, I walk outside, and I'm doing something outside for whatever reason. That or I'm just watching the rainfall, editing on my computer by the windowsill. That's a pretty good vibe too. I know it doesn't sound like the most exciting of summer vibes and that's why you're probably on this list. But if you're also like me and you don't always get straight up summer weather, definitely have something like this in your arsenal if you don't. Doesn't necessarily have to be this scent, but yes, have a rainy day fragrance. But again, I love it for the reasons I already mentioned. So once again, it's Splendiris by Poffums Ducita. Now moving on to my number six, Six summer fragrance and this is way more of a typical summer fragrance but not so typical when I describe it. It's called Curacao Bay by Jacques Fott. Now what I like about this scent is that you get the nautical vibe of a traditionally summer marine type of fragrance. So salty and watery and definitely feels like you're at bay somewhere. But what separates this scent from other marine ones is that you have this beautiful tropical summer floral called frangipani that's just jumping out at you. It's creamy, it's buttery, and I just feel like it just puts you in that tropical idyllic mindset. So if you're the type to want a vacation somewhere nice this summer, this is definitely something I would consider taking with me or taking with you sorry as a matter of fact two years ago i took this scent with me to singapore in the winter it was winter in my country that's why i went to that country where it's always summer per se and it's not like i did much research <laughs> upon going there but i was also really happy to see that on top of the beautiful weather you had beautiful frangipani everywhere too and so it made wearing this scent feel extra appropriate which i again just furthermore loved but i must say it is kind of a weird concoction because you have something as tropical as that floral scent mixed with something kind of salty so it is awkward as a result not my favorite unique accord if you will but it's definitely one that puts a smile on my face with throwback vibes and gentlemen if you are apprehensive of a quote-unquote tropical floral again i can really understand that but with the marine notes here i feel like it's subdued it enough to where it's definitely advertised properly as a unisex fragrance. So if any of that interests you, definitely check this out already. It's my vacation scent for the summer. It's Curacao Bay by Jacques Bath at number six. All right, motoring along, we are crossing the halfway point, and this is another summer mainstay now at number five. Here we go. It's Oolong Cha by Nishane. Now, if Gucci Pour Homme Dub by Gucci is my favorite designer tea scent, this is without a doubt my favorite niche tea scent. And it's kind of for the opposite reasons of Gucci Pour that one leans kind of old worldly with a little bit of resins and it's subdued nature with the tea. And to be fair, that's a tea kind of facet. You kind of want it to be calming and zen and whatnot. But here the tea is kind of sexed up a little because it actually performs like a beast. Like try wearing this stuff. It's just gonna emit off of you in the sun. Also it has a really bright opening. You have Litsia Kubeba and Bergamot there too. So you have the sharp citrus, but greenness, sweetness as well. So all in all, sharp, citrusy, fruity, green, 
beast mode tee, like what's not to love? And I must say that if I'm looking for a single scent on this list to just kind of last me throughout the day, say if I'm not wearing multiple scents that day, typically out of the ones on this list, this is the scent I would reach for. Of course, admittedly, it's going to project furthermore in the morning, but come at night, it's still not a slouch if I've been wearing it for a number of hours. So shout outs to Nishane for that, always holding it down with the extract the puff on concentration for the most part. So again, if you are a tea lover and you typically love that kind of subdued DNA, but for once want something to jump out at your face, definitely check this out if you've yet to already. At this point, long time watchers of this channel, I'm pretty sure you have checked it out just because I keep spamming it, but again, for good reason. I love it. It's my number five summer niche fragrance this year. It's Wulong Cha by Nishani. Now moving on to my number four summer niche fragrance, and this kind of sounds weird because I just mentioned tea and now I'm mentioning coffee, which is not typically seen as a summer note. But I can't help but spam this fragrance this year right now because I just think it's a coffee fragrance that actually works for this time of the year. It's called Golden Mocha by Zerzhov. So you must be wondering, Cascade, how is coffee a summery note for once? Of course, you typically think of coffee as a more autumn and wintry note, but that's typically coffee in a more creamy form when it comes to perfumery. One that kind of leans towards a cup of joe with some milk in it and or maybe it's a cappuccino or something like that. And hey, if that's what you're looking for as far as coffee only throughout any time of the year, definitely just skip to the next fragrance because that's not what this scent is. So despite the coffee marketing here, it's not just a coffee fragrance. And as a matter of fact, it's more of a citrus slash sweet citrus slash bittersweet citrus kind of fragrance with a coffee backbone that's really pretty yet kind of subdued right behind it. What I get out of this is how it's marketed. You got some blood orange in there and for me, a lot of it off my skin. So that blast of bittersweet citrus that leans tart is what you get for the most part until you get a little bit more of that coffee bean coming out in the back. I personally really think it's pleasant and I appreciate that this line is doing something different with coffee for once. As a matter of fact, the rest of the fragrances don't straight up smell like a cup of Starbucks. I really feel like the Coffee Break collection from Zerzhov is them trying to do different things with coffee. So if you're not a coffee fragrance lover with how you're accustomed to smelling it in like a Rojas Man and or a Michael Jordan Legend or a Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem, believe it or not, you might like it in the form of something summery where it just doesn't lean remotely that way. Definitely check this stuff out already if you have yet to. I think it's awesome. Again, from the Coffee Break collection by Zerzhov, this one is Gold Mocha, my number four summer fragrance. All right, four, I'm moving on to my number three summer fragrance. We're just motoring along here. We're finna get floral again, and I really feel like I want to have one fragrance of this kind of note in just about every seasonal list. I also believe that this note, there is a fragrance for anyone out there, regardless of what they tell themselves, whether they're a man or a woman. And that note I'm talking about is rose. And I think I have a summary rose fragrance here, but you can really reach for it for anything. I do spam this fragrance a lot. Again, it is this one, Lyric Man by Amwash. So you might be wondering what makes this fragrance not a deep dark rose, which you might be accustomed to smelling out of niche perfumery. Well, it's simple. The lime opening here is juicy as hell. It's one of the prettier lime openings out here in my personal opinion, especially for a rose fragrance. Don't think I've smelled that kind of a cord elsewhere. And it just feels long lasting, believe it or not, despite not feeling remotely too synthetic per Couple that with really bright rose absolutes that just don't feel dark and voluptuous, but more like a happier and brighter rose. I just think it's awesome and it just doesn't come off as quote unquote perfumey as a result. Definitely a more night out, smart casual wear of a fragrance if I'm going to reach for this stuff in the summer. So if I'm out to a nice dinner or something like that with the people I care about most in my life, this is the kind of scent I will reserve for situations as sacred as that. And yeah, I can just envision myself again post COVID or rather post lockdown just going going up to really nice lounges and whatnot, you know, being with friends and or a date just wearing this. And gentlemen, not once do I get called out feminine for wearing something like this. And yeah, you might get that out of the cap, which I understand because you're just smelling it like this. It's that sparkly rose absolute that's just gonna jump out at you at first. But actually spray this onto your skin, experience that juicy lime, experience how that rose transitions into that musk, getting that really nice clean enveloping effect. I just feel like it's warm, but not too warm for a perfect summer night. So overall, it's a juicy, bright, warm, kind of cozy floral, very regal stuff. I can't help but love it. That's why it's as high as number three this year on my summer niche list. It's Lyric Man by Amwash. All right, for I'm moving on to number two on this list this year, and this one's been number one in the past, but I can't help but keep reaching for it. And there are other scents on this list that I've been tired of reaching for, and they might not be as high as a result this year. But this one, I just feel like is going to be top five, if not top three, 
just from now on. So here it is yet again, it's Note de Yuzu by Maison Kitsune x James Healy. Literally my favorite perfume collaboration period with a really awesome brand in Maison Kitsune, which is very influenced by Japanese culture. So as a result, the way they advertise the scent is, and I quote, when Paris meets Tokyo. And I just think that's absolutely awesome. For me, I love the traditional and somewhat conventional, I guess, just surgical approach to French perfumery. No harsh edges when you smell some of this high-end stuff and whatnot, but you combine that with some Japanese inspiration and boy, do you have a match made in heaven here. So if you've ever been to a Japanese onsen before, you're getting that kind of freshness here with the yuzu. So you're gonna get something here that's watery, that's marine, but dressed with the best kind of lemony opening ever for me. So legit, when I just wanna feel clean and I really don't know what to wear, this is the scent I kinda just reach for all the time. I've had this scent for two years and I'm a person who has 150 fragrances and up. And I think this is quite saying much where I'm actually halfway gone on this bottle. Definitely one I'll have to buy a backup or two of more. But for me to love this scent despite being so fleeting, I just think is awesome. So again, it's one of those cases where despite how fleeting it is, I enjoy the emotion that much that it supersedes the quote unquote lack of value. But because it's perhaps the lightest performing scent on this list, it's definitely one I would be apprehensive about blind buying. So test it out on your skin, see if it's for you. If you like that kind of journey, a clean, fresh, citrusy, east meat, west kind of inspiration. I just think it's overall super lovely. The longest title on pretty much any list I put it on, it's Note de Yuzu by Maison Kitsune x James Healy, this time at number two. But we finally arrived at the main event of the evening. I feel like I've compiled quite the list of variety when it comes to any summer list I've ever compiled ever. I'm actually really proud of what I've been able to compile this year for y'all because I'm genuinely really excited again to wear all this stuff for the reasons I've stated. But I'm even more proud to wear this stuff for the reasons I'm gonna say it. That's why it's my number one. And here it is. It's Riviera Drive by Atelier des Ors. Now when the Riviera collection was initially announced by Atelier des Ors, of course I was head over here for the presentation. How can you not be? You got the classic gold Schlager-esque gold flakes in the Atelier des Ors bottle, but this time dressed in something summery in blue. And I was hoping I'd find something within the line that smelled just as beautiful as this bottle looks. And luckily for me, I found something here in Riviera Drive. I think this is the ultimate masculine summer fragrance on this list. It's the one that doesn't necessarily scream, if anything. But picture yourself kind of dressed up, smart casual, if not smarter, like leaning formal. Maybe you're wearing stuff a little looser. You have that sprezzatura kind of vibe. This scent is actually inspired by To Catch a Thief by Alfred Hitchcock with Cary Grant and Grace Kelly, if you've yet to see that movie. That movie was pretty AF for its time and I'm definitely feeling that kind of inspiration into this fragrance. That's what this scent is for me. And I just love that kind of vibe that I'm getting out of it. So to achieve that vibe, I'm getting an herbal take on lemon here. It's still a juicy lemon, don't get me wrong, but you're getting greener, more herbaceous facets too, which I just think lean more, masculine. As the stuff starts to dry down, you have a little bit of absinthe in there as well as patchouli. So lean's intoxicating in a more high-end traditional way. And I know I keep saying these things about how it just makes you feel more esteemed, but I don't think that this quote unquote only leans mature. I'd say if you're classy enough in your 20s to be able to rock this, definitely do it. But again, I just can't help but think how picturesque this stuff is and how it makes me feel emotionally. Like I was on the Riviera as recently as September of last year. So to take in the sea air there and to just chill by the greens of hotel terrace with a drink in hand, I just think is this scent right here. Again, it's just a really cool feeling. So I can't help but love it as a result. And I really hope you guys do too. So yeah, I'm just biased towards that vibe and I definitely feel the soul of this fragrance. That's why I have it as high as number one this year. So again, if you've yet to check it out, it is called Riviera Drive by Atelier Des Ors. So with that being said, Forum, I think that about does it for me this year when it comes to my summer niche fragrances top 10. This is literally, in retrospect, one of my favorite lists I've ever compiled. And I don't normally feel like I'm feeling myself after every list that I've ever made, but I must say I feel really flexy right now. Again, that's what scents like these will make you feel like when you're in the summer. So if you like to treat your summertime with some gravity, if you're going to the beach, you're going to the country club, things like that. If you're going to your downtown core for happy hour and or shopping, or maybe you're just kicking back at home, just taking in your day off. I really do feel like I have everything here for 
everyone, or at least one thing for everyone. So yeah, what do you think of that forum? Please let me know in the comment section below if you've yet to. Is there anything you think I missed as well? Please let me know too. I'm always looking forward to checking out new niche fragrances, especially for the summer, because I, again, love summery niche fragrances. But yeah, also on top of that, if you enjoyed the video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And if you really, really enjoyed it, definitely subscribe if you've yet to, so you don't miss any uploads like this. And if you extra don't want to miss any uploads like this, also hit the notification bell. It helps me and it helps you too. So yeah, again, forum, thank you for the ongoing support as always. And until then, that bell does it for me. So take care for now. Peace out. Bye. Where are your fragrances?